cam table overflow attacks, and how to stop them. Let's begin. I'd like you to imagine an attacker, or maybe even a disgruntled employee who's connected to the network and decides that they want to eavesdrop or listen in to all the conversations that are happening on this switch. Now the challenge is that a switch is going to forward traffic only to the ports that need that traffic. So if this PC is communicating out to the internet, the traffic would be going between the client's port and the router port, and that traffic wouldn't be forwarded over to the attacker's machine. And that's one of the benefits of using a layer 2 switch. So a very easy way to take advantage of the switch and to trick it is to do something called a CAM table overflow attack. The acronym CAM stands for Content Addressable Memory. That's where the switch stores all of the layer 2 MAC addresses that it learns and memorizes. And this attack takes advantage of the fact that the CAM table is not unlimited. For example, you may have a switch that has a capacity of 6,000 MAC addresses that it can memorize. That's the max or 15,000 MAC addresses that it can memorize, and that's the max. But whatever that maximum is, if the attacker can send so many MAC addresses in through this port, because the switch can't possibly remember more than it has memory to as far as MAC addresses, the intention is by the attacker that new frames that go into the switch, if the switch no longer remembers PC1's MAC address or the router's MAC address, the switch would then forward those frames to every other port in that same VLAN. And that makes the attacker happy because now the attacker can see those packets and those frames on his port and he can now eavesdrop on the network. That is a CAM table overflow attack. And it's done with tools like MacOff, which sends thousands and thousands of frames into the network and it makes up fictitious MAC addresses for the source addresses, tricking the switch into learning thousands and thousands of MAC addresses on that single port. And as a result, overflowing the capacity of the CAM table. So that's the attack scenario. The actual mitigation of this type of an attack is done by telling the switch that enough is enough. For example, instead of letting the attacker send 6,000 packets with different MAC addresses and having the switch memorize all of them, maybe we tell the switch on these access ports that the maximum number of MAC addresses is five or the maximum number of MAC addresses is one. And then any MAC addresses above the maximum that we set for this port are simply going to be ignored. And that way we don't have a risk of learning thousands of MAC addresses on a single access port when really the customer only needs one or maybe two or three if they're using virtual machines and so forth at their desktop. Now once we enable port security, we can specify what we want port security to do if there's a violation, if this number is exceeded. We can say protect, and protect is very shy, meaning it doesn't like to let people know. Protect says, I won't let more than five MAC addresses be learned on this port. However, I'm not going to send syslog messages or alerts. I'm simply going to keep quiet about it. Restrict, on the other hand, is very much like Protect, except it does generate alerts and syslog messages and SNMP messages so that we can be notified, you and I as administrators, that this is actually happening on our network. And the third action, which is the most severe, and it's also the default, is shutdown. And the shutdown option puts the port into an error-disabled state. So it's effectively shut down, and no packets are now allowed into that port until that port is brought up out of error disable. And the default parameters for port security is a maximum MAC address of 1 if the feature is enabled, unless we specify a higher number of MAC addresses, and the default action is shut down. One other thing you need to know about port security on a Cisco environment is that the port has to be an access port or a trunk port. It cannot be configured as a dynamic port. We need to hard code it as access or trunk in order for port security to be enabled on that port. So I've got an implementation of Kali Linux. It happens to be running on a Raspberry Pi sitting on port two of the switch and we're simply gonna launch MacOff. And what this command is gonna do is gonna go ahead and use the interface of ethernet zero, which is physically connected to ethernet two on the switch, and it's just going to pump in thousands and thousands of frames with made up random MAC addresses in the attempt to overflow the CAM table. And what I'd like to do is let's go ahead and run this just for like 15 seconds. Now, in a real attack, we might leave this running indefinitely to keep the CAM table as full as possible. But here, I'm going to do a control C and just to take a look at the results of this CAM table overflow attack that we've run, let's go back to the switch. And on the switch, let's use the command show MAC address table dynamic for VLAN 123. That happens to be the port, the VLAN that port 0 slash 2 is in on the switch. And if we hit the spacebar a few times, there's just page after page after page of all these MAC addresses that have been learned on gig 0 slash 2. And these are the MAC addresses that have been made up fictitiously by the Kali Linux box who's running the MacOff utility.
So I'm going to hit Q to stop the paging of that information. And in those few moments that Mac off was running, let's just take a look and see how many MAC addresses it actually sent in and that the switch learned about. We can see that with a show MAC address table count for VLAN 123. And it currently shows here that we have 5,699 MAC addresses that this switch is still hanging on to, all due to that one little Raspberry Pi running Kali Linux pumping those into port 2. And if we had left it running indefinitely, it's very likely to have consumed virtually everything available on that switch as far as content addressable memory. So next, let's go ahead and configure port security. And just to start on a nice even playing field, I'm going to default interface gig 0 slash 2. That's where the Kelly Linux box is. And then we'll go into interface gig 0 slash 2, and we'll configure port security on that port. Now, the port cannot be a dynamic port. It has to be either an access port or a trunk. So I'm going to put this back as an access port, assign it again to VLAN 123. And the benefit of doing this default beforehand in this lab environment is that I want to make sure you see that there's nothing else currently present on that interface. What you see here is going to be what we're going to get. Now, the default maximum number of MAC addresses once we enable port security is one. If we want to be a little more lenient, we could say, for example, OK, you can have up to five MAC addresses with port security on this port. And in many cases with virtual machines and other stuff going on, I think five is a very reasonable number for an average access port. Next, let's say that if there is a violation, if we do go above five MAC addresses that have been learned on that port, instead of shutting down the port, which is the default behavior, and putting it into an error disabled state, let's go ahead and simply do a restrict option, which generates syslog messages, sends SNMP traps if we have SNMP configured, and it prevents any additional frames above the five from having success in forwarding frames into the network on port gigabit zero slash two. Now, last but not least, here's the command that I still continue to forget. And that is, we need to enable port security to make it work. So the final nail in the coffin is switch port, port security. And then that turns on the feature, which uses these parameters of the maximum number five and the action of restrict. So it's this guy right here that turns it on. And if we hadn't included the maximum number, it would be one by default. And if we hadn't included restrict, it would be shut down by default as the violation action. So now we can go try the attack one more time back on the Kelly box and hit the up arrow key, launch the Mac off utility again. We can just let it run because the switch isn't paying attention to any more than the first five Mac addresses that showed up on that port. In fact, if we go back to the console on that port, we have these little port security violation messages popping up indicating that port security is being violated over and over and over again on that port. So let's go back to Kelly. I'll do a control C to stop the attack. And back on the switch, if we want to take a look at the details of port security for gig 0 slash 2, we'd use a show port security for that interface. And that reveals that the maximum number of MAC addresses is 5. We're currently at the number of 5. And here's our security violation count. 13,841 violations just from MAC off trying over and over again to send frames into the network with additional MAC addresses above and beyond the 5 that were allowed by port security. If we want to see what the lucky five MAC addresses were, we can do a show port security address, and it will tell us the five MAC addresses that are currently allowed. And these are the five lucky MAC addresses, the source MAC addresses that are going to be allowed in frames to go into that port on gig 0 slash 2. If a frame's source MAC address isn't one of these five, that frame is going to be dropped and not allowed into the switch. I've had a great time, and I'm glad that you joined me for this video. Other related courses at CBT Nuggets include the pen testing with Linux tools, which includes Backtrack and Kali Linux, Security Plus, which is CompTIA's, CCNA Security from Cisco, CISSP from ISC Squared, and the Certified Ethical Hacker course are all available as part of a membership up at CBT Nuggets. So again, thanks for joining me. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.